Okay, I don't think we've had this one. <laughs> well, top five Tuesday, everybody, and this is a topic that's very close to my heart. Um, and close to my desk. It's about these things, cables, everybody. Well, I'm going to construe this as like types of cables and connectors that you can get. And we're going to open with the humble HDMI. Number five HDMI. I bet you're thinking, what? How can it be so low? Well, HDMI was revolutionary at the time. It was amazing when um, it was one of those things where you had to be there because everybody growing up with HDMI now, they don't appreciate it, I bet. Um, when you grew up with having to faff about with uh, composite cables, which, let me tell you, are not anywhere near the top five. And then suddenly, your consoles could connect with this one cable that did everything. It was mind-blowing. And that is after having grown up with RF, which is definitely not on the top five either. And that just... I mean, it was one cable that did everything, but it was awful, and you had to tune your telly to get anything to come out, and then if you're lucky, you might get a colour picture <laughs> and then if you're really lucky you might get a colour picture that's like not rolling or fuzzy or well it was always fuzzy it was RF uh, composite was slightly better than RF but then HDMI you just plugged it straight into your telly plugged it into your console and it was just there and it was perfect it was great it was HDMI and it still is it's a good general purpose uh, video and audio connector not amazing sometimes we have trouble with HDCP and that does cause some issues and of course, it does have a uh, does have its limitations. Like I think it can only transmit up to sixty frames per second. So, you know, it has been superseded by the likes of DisplayPort. But having not used DisplayPort to its maximum potential, well, I can't really comment on that. Number four, then. Um. Number four. Well, how about the three and a half millimeter? It's not really got a proper name. It's called the RCA, it's called the phone jack, it's called the um, auxiliary, or sometimes referred to as AUX, or sometimes even referred to as AUX, as if that means anything. It doesn't. Um, no, it's the 3.5mm standard audio jack that you find on nothing these days. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty ubiquitous, and still is in many respects, because it is the audio jack. Um... There is one. Do I have one to hand? Eh. Well, that's the um, the big guitar amp one, but that's the three three and a half millimeter. You all know it. You all love it. Uh, also known as the TRS, which is a much quicker and better name for it. Uh, and I'll tell you why actually. Um, it's got. It's, it's, well, I'll maybe use the big one for that. Uh, <laughs> tip, ring, sleeve. Oh yeah, TRS connector. Once again, it's a great cable that just does everything that it needs to. It's got, you can do quality audio output. Um, not in anything better than stereo, I don't think. I think stereo is the best it can do, um, or maybe 2.1. Um, but for standard audio use, you can get good quality um, analog signal out of it, which is really nice. And it can also take an input, so it can take a microphone and feed it back down. Brilliant, brilliant bit of design. It's just this nice, simple cable. You can get it in crappy, cheap varieties. You can get it in nice, expensive varieties. I have a couple. And you can get splitters. So it can very easily split apart, it's not great because, well, it sounds fine, it's just not the best solution. Um, and it's, like I said, it's ubiquitous. You can find converters for it and you can find devices that use it. Like Even my wireless headphones, you can connect them via um, TRS if you so wish. So that's number four. Number three, I'm tempted to go for... I should have included a link cable or something on this, but they're not uh, very, very situational of the link cables. Um, 
Ooh, I don't know what number three. I know what number two and number one are. If you know, if you know me at all, then you know what number one is. Uh, I'm just stuck on number three. What cables do I even use? Hmm. I know, RJ45, aka Ethernet cable, uh, but really Ethernet doesn't actually mean anything. What you the the correct term RJ45 is the the shape of the connector, um, so it takes eight um, twisted pairs, four twisted pairs, no eight twisted pairs. RJ11 is four twisted pairs. Uh, I've tried to make a. <laughs> Ethernet cable once didn't go very well, as you can probably tell. Um, the actual cable is called a. The standard one is a Cat Five E, uh, but you you know you've got from Cats One to Six. I think even Cat Seven. Do I have a Cat Seven somewhere around? I probably do. Um, but yeah, the Cat Five E is the standard one, um, but we'll call it an Ethernet because that's what everybody knows it as. It's a nice. Network cable. What I like about it is that the RJ45 connector has got a nice inbuilt, um, it's called a shoe. Uh, it basically stops it from being pulled out by accident unless you really, really force it. Uh, it does tend to snap quite easily on the standard ones, but you can get some more reinforced ones, so that's good. Uh, and well, in theory, they're easy to make. If you remember the, the order in which they go, again, I tried to make one, it was disastrous. Um, I think I got it about 50% correct. Yeah, bad times for all. But the thing with uh, the Cat5e is that it can also take power. And I believe... Can it also take video of some description? I want to say it can, because you can get video over Ethernet adapters. Um, I did consider using one for my streaming setup at one point, but I didn't think it was a particularly workable solution. But anyway, they can certainly take power. Um, PoE, power over Ethernet, which is really, really handy for powering network devices, would you believe? If you've got a PoE switch, just plug the Ethernet in one side, plug it directly into the thing at the other, and it'll be powered. Incredible, isn't it? Um, it should... I don't really have anything that uses PoE. I don't. Even, well, if I, the thing with PoE is that unless you've got a PoE switch, you have to use a PoE injector, and by that point you might as well just plug the damn thing in. Whatever you're trying to power, but that's by the by. Ethernet pretty damn good and works really well. Gigabit, um, I think Cat Five E can go up to ten gigabit, and the Cat Six something about it being a bit more shielded or whatever. But yes, let's just say Ethernet cable is number three. Number two, why it's only this guy. This, my friends, is USB-C. Once again, one of those things that I bet a lot of people just take for granted now. Um, but, well, us millennials, you see, we always had the meme of, oh, you're trying to plug a USB in, you plug it in that way, it don't go in. You plug it in that way, it don't go in. You plug it in that way again, and it does go in. USB was such a nightmare, uh, USB-A, I should say. Such a faff, because it's this square thing and you can accidentally put it in the wrong way and you won't know until you try and put it in. But even when you try and put it in the right way, it's a faff because it doesn't go in. USB-C, well, not only can it go in either way, but you can use it for so many different um, applications. You can have data transfer, and it's very, very fast data transfer as well, uh, USB 3 um, speeds, I don't think you can even get USB-C over USB 2, but that's a lot of USB, huh? It grips really tightly, this one doesn't because it's a bit crap, um, it looks nicer than it is. You can do video over USB-C, you can have docking stations powered with USB-C and they work really well, um, and it's just this really nice solution to a problem that many of us had over many years. Uh, but you all know about USB-C. It's really, really good. Uh, so that's number two. But number one, 
Oh yeah, I don't have one to hand. How tragic is that? Uh, not unless I go under the desk, but I ain't doing that. The RGB cable. Also, well, it's got a SCART connector on the end, but the actual cable is called an RGB, and it is different from a SCART cable. You see, when I was growing up, once again, we had SCART cables, and they were kind of the thing you used if you couldn't use composite. The quality was identical to our eyes, um, in our, on our crappy tellies, and, well, it, it was useful because it did it all, but it was it was a faff to get in, it was a weird shape, and it was always this really chunky cable. And then I learnt about RGB, and I thought, well, hang on, this is, if it's a SCART cable, it's probably a bit crap. But when I, when I started to get into uh, gaming on real hardware, classic retro gaming, everybody was talking about how great RGB is, and you should mod all your consoles to use RGB output. And now I see why that is, because it get this beautiful signal out of it. You get audio as well, of course, but you get a fantastic uh, analog signal. It's the best possible analog signal you can get, in fact, um, without going into things like BNC. But BNC is a, a connector type as well, so that's not really anything. Essentially, it's instead of having all the video going down one um, thin little cable and getting all muddy along the way. The RGB, the red, green, and blue signals are split, and they are on different lines. So, the end, the end result is far clearer as a result. Two results, very good. And well, like I say, it carries audio too, and it's compatible with composite. So if you've got something that doesn't spot RGB, then just use it anyway. But um, yeah, it's just it's it's this. It feels industrial, and it feels like a proper quality item when you use an RGB cable it's it's hench you know so that is my number one and that's a that's a surprisingly long vlog for just talking about cables but there we go thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow